Have you ever wondered how the gigantic columns of bridges are constructed in standing water of the oceans? Do workers and engineers use special machinery, concrete, and cement that works in wet conditions? In this video, let's find out. It might appear that in underground construction, workers wear diving suits and go deeper into the water. However, that's mostly not the case. Working directly underwater comes with a lot of challenges. Visibility is poor, and the pressure can be dangerous for workers. Additionally, equipment is more likely to malfunction in these conditions. To bypass these issues, engineers create a dry workspace where they can work safely and with greater precision. This is done by constructing a temporary dam-like structure from all sides, in the middle of the water body, called a coffer dam. But what is it? A coffer dam is a temporary barrier built in the water to keep a specific area dry, allowing construction to proceed more easily. You can think of it as a large, sturdy box that prevents water from entering the area where you need to build. The construction of a coffer dam begins with the installation of guide piles. These are long, strong poles driven deep into the ground using a machine called a pile driving hammer. These guide piles form the framework for the coffer dam, ensuring that everything stays aligned as construction moves forward. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more educational videos on mechanisms, how things really work, and what they are, explained in the simplest way possible. Let's continue now. Once the guide piles are in place, engineers install sheet piles. These are long, flat metal pieces that lock together to form a continuous wall around the area you want to keep dry. The same pile driving machine is used to drive these sheet piles deep into the ground, where they fit together like puzzle pieces to create a tight seal that keeps water out. But one thing should be noted. Driving sheet piles into the ground is not just about pushing them down, as that would be too difficult and could damage the piles. Instead, the machine uses vibrations to help the sheet piles slide into the ground more easily. These vibrations slightly shake the soil, making it looser and easier for the piles to penetrate. Even after the sheet piles are in place, the water inside the cofferdam needs to be pumped out. However, because of the difference in pressure between the water outside trying to get in and the air inside, water can sometimes seep through tiny gaps between the sheet piles. To address this, engineers might build a double-layered cofferdam with two walls of sheet piles and a gap in between. This gap is filled with materials like sand or gravel, which help absorb the pressure and further reduce water leakage. Once the water inside the cofferdam is removed, the outside water pressure can push the sheet piles inward, potentially causing the structure to collapse. To prevent this, a bracing frame is installed inside the cofferdam. This frame acts as a support system, holding the walls in place and preventing them from buckling under pressure. Once the cofferdam is in place and most of the water has been pumped out, the next step is to create a concrete seal course. This is a thick layer of concrete poured at the bottom of the cofferdam to completely seal it off and prevent any more water from coming in. This concrete base provides a solid foundation for the structure that will be built above it, such as a bridge pier. To pour this concrete underwater, engineers use a method called tremi concrete. A pipe with a plug at the bottom is used to keep water out while the concrete is being poured. As the concrete fills the area, the pipe is slowly lifted, ensuring that the concrete pushes out any remaining water and forms a solid, continuous layer. With the concrete seal in place, the construction of the permanent structure, such as the base of a bridge, can begin. Engineers use high-quality materials and reinforce the structure with steel bars to ensure it's strong enough to withstand the pressure of water and the weight of the bridge. Once the permanent structure is strong enough, the cofferdam is no longer needed. The sheet piles are cut down to the level of the concrete base and removed, leaving the new structure securely in place. After the construction is complete, the structure is regularly checked to ensure there are no issues with water seepage or structural problems. If any issues arise, they can be quickly addressed to prevent damage. What did you believe earlier when you saw things made in water bodies? Do you think there can be another easier method than making small dams to construct projects in water? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on whether such construction can be done in the deepest oceans. Do you want to watch more videos like this one, where we explain complex processes and functions in the simplest and most logical ways? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on machines, mechanisms, and how complex things work. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.